Previously, I bought this little BMW 320D to replace my wife's daily driver of the 5 Series. She needed something a little smaller, more practical, and more fuel efficient. And I needed another YouTube project, so we met in the middle and I bought a broken car. After getting the car home, giving it a good clean, I realized there were more problems besides just a smoke smell in the interior. The BMW needed a lot more doing, from needing a new clutch, flywheel, to most things in between, like belts, pulleys, a thermostat, a radiator, because that was bent for some reason, glow plugs, and preventative swirl flaps. Now, while talking about preventative work on the BMW N47, you can't forget the timing chain. It's known for failing, leaving you with Valves and pistons meeting in the most unfortunate of events, making the car absolutely worthless because the replacement engine in the most times is worth more than the car itself. So to avoid fixing this car and having the engine fail, I decided, hey, let's change the timing chain while I was in there. Now, I've never changed the timing chain on an engine that involved removing the entire engine, but I never want to back down from the challenge. So on with tools, the internet, and a dream. Okay, maybe not a dream but the unhealthy obsession of not letting old cars go to the scrapyard in the sky, I set to work. Disconnecting and removing the engine went far better than I imagined. I then started the teardown of the engine and inspected of a timing chain wear and oil sludge, but I found nothing. After cleaning and prepping, the engine was ready for the new timing chain kit. Installing the kit and timing the engine was so easy with the right tools. And after all that, the engine's back in the car. Now, let's see if it can start. I've done quite a lot off camera. Um, really busy Saturday, had a friend come over and help. So we've done everything from cut the injector seating to get the old O-rings out, or really they're like brass washers really that go between the injectors and everything. Got those sorted out, cleaned the bores as well, because it's a really handy tool that allows you to do that. So the injectors can seat properly and without any leaks, which is fantastic news. But we also went ahead and managed to get the engine back in the car, which is, another milestone in its own, I mean, look at yourself. The uh, rain has started in the last few minutes as well, which is just fantastic. Um, I'm going to keep the gimbal on speed mode so I can quickly move without it being too much of a pain. So, cooler in place, injectors, new valve cover gasket, the timing chain covers on, blah blah blah, all of that, new poly obviously as well, and the flywheel, I don't know whether I mentioned that is on, but yes, the flywheel is also on, which is great news, so it means another thing sorted out, the EPF was a pain in the butt to get back on, other than that, making good progress. The only hitch I've run into is obviously I want to try start the car in this particular like arrangement before I put everything else back on just in case there's a problem. Um, so I have the battery out of the car which is actually toast. Now the battery itself is there as you can see it looked like there was quite a bit of water in the boot of the car which is not great. So. I actually charged up the old battery from the 325 here, um, it is a 70 amp hour which is notably smaller than the one that we need and then I've got the 60 amp hour from the Supra also charged up because I used that for a bit to get the fuel system bled but I only cycled the fuel pump which is not enough. So what I need to do now is actually open the diagnostic software, go in and actually have the whole fuel system kind of running for three minutes. So I need obviously the fully charged battery from the 325 or the old 325 battery. Um, it's still good enough to work and crank the car, but I don't think it'll hold power long enough for the system to run like full blast and bleed itself out. So I've charged up the super battery as well because we used that initially, but it didn't have enough juice all by its lonesome. So we're going to pop it back in the Supra, pop some jumper leads on, start up the Supra and let it run as our energy source to make sure that we don't lose any voltage because we can't have a voltage drop across that three minute window because if the ECU detects a voltage drop, then it will abort the whole thing and we won't get a proper bleed on the system. We've got to start again. So I need to go ahead and do that once the rain stops. So the rain's decided, hey, you know what? 
It hasn't rained all day long, it wasn't supposed to, but the moment you start getting everything ready, it's going to rain. But, I have also got something else, which is rather good for the 320 and any cars going further that I'll get, is a little ozone generator. Now, if you're not familiar with ozone generators, they're actually really good for removing smells out of cars. Um, the science behind it, I cannot explain, but if you want to know, Google it. There's quite a few people, especially auto detailers, that do this kind of cleaning for a living, and they swear by ozone generators because different chemicals and things, they only mask smells and they come back, whereas this actually breaks down, I think, on a molecular level, the smell itself. So, yes, ozone generator. But I have to obviously pop this in the car, run it for about half an hour with the car sealed up, so it can you know, get into every bit of the car's interior, um, into all the little fibers. Because obviously I've deep cleaned the car and everything else, and I still can't get that smoke smell out. So that's the reason for the ozone generator, and that's why it is going to be crucial to have that running. Because that's why I said a smoke smelling car is not great. If you're not a smoker, you know what I'm talking about. It's awful to smell that. So I'm going to sort that out. But again, it is raining, so I don't feel like running an extension cord out in the rain and then having to deal with that. So I will do something else. I'm not sure what now. Because it all hinged on the weather playing ball. Oh, I haven't released the detailing video as of filming this, so let me see if I can get some B-roll again once once the damn rain stops. So yeah, that, that's my life right now. Waiting on the good old rain to stop. Hey, I don't know if you'll hear me over this, but we've got the 2JZ generator hooked up. Um, I know you're supposed to use the poles on the front, but the leads will never reach the front. And yeah, so we've got the 14 volts from the Supra traveling through. I've double checked here and on the front and we're getting the voltage, so great. Let's try the bleed procedure on the BMW now that it has proper power. So we'll get into the diagnostic and I will give that a try. Right, we are at the point of bleeding the fuel system. So we have just activated the fuel pump where it's got to run for three minutes. So I'm having a look here on the engine bay. And nothing in the engine bay is leaking. So the fittings down there, if you can see them, there for the fuel system aren't leaking, which is great. You can see the little colored connectors down there. Just down there, those two there. That's our feed and our return. Nothing up here on the rail, which is good news. can hear some whirring and stuff going on here, but I cannot see any leaks, which is good news. Right, we will let that carry on and see how it goes. So we now have successfully bled the system in its non-started state. Now we're going to try start it. So here it goes. Kick the clutch down and start the engine. Let's see, shall will she start? There we go. She lives. <laughs> Right, I am going to shut her down because we have no coolant system, but there we go. First start. <laughs> that means I did the timing chain correctly because the valves didn't hit anything. <laughs> uh, right, okay, we are going to quickly try start that again. It takes a little long, so we get the system needs to get bled out properly. And we're open down pipe and quite a few sensors are still not connected, so. In fail safe mode, she's running and she fires up. This is great news. So I'm gonna call it there. Turn her off and let's put everything back together. And yes, for anyone wondering, I 
do not have the clutch on, I only have the flywheel wheel connected so obviously the gearbox isn't in, so the engine is currently resting on some old welding gloves of mine um, to stop the engine from rocking backwards and forwards. It's obviously on the mounts but to properly level the engine it needs that and I have successfully managed to tear one of the unterrible gloves, so I hope that isn't a bad omen for how the rest of the day is going to go. Yeah. Let's hope it's not. So, I need to now, well, we'll disconnect the Supra and the power and stop putting everything together because we've got the new radiator and we're going to get the coolant pack and everything sorted and bolted on in place, hoses all plumbed up, get the clutch on, get the gearbox on, lead the coolant system out and then we will start the car up again and go from there. But I want to quickly check and see that the moment it ran there we don't have any weeping from any sort of like gaskets or anything near the main seal or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and check that first before we pop that back on. Again, the rain has started again, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get much further with this today. I might have to pick this up tomorrow, so probably a change of outfit and hair on the next clip, but wish me luck. Well, the sun has decided to grace us with its presence about an hour or so later. Yeah, about an hour or so later. So, I am going to quickly pop the ozone machine inside the car now that I've got it to start. And I'm going to start then putting things back together here in the engine bay. And oh, I've already given the whole car like a good vacuum in the back. Now that we have the ozone generator all ready to go, as you can see, things for deodorizing, air purifying and eliminating bacteria, which is helpful. I'm going to say usually 15 to 30 minutes, we're going to give it a good 30 minutes I'd say in here because it is bad so we'll turn the timer there we go to 30 minutes and we'll leave it be you can't breathe in the stuff it's not exactly good for you so we are going to obviously close that all up and tuck the cable up out of the way there and just loosely close the door there so we don't pinch the cable but we've got enough so we've got a seal on the door. So we'll leave that in there for the next 30 minutes. The timer will self-cancel by itself, which is great. And I will periodically just keep an eye on it. Thank goodness for handle grinders. So I've managed to cut a groove into this bolt and its little counterpart over here, which was a Torx bit, but you know what the weather does. It, uh, it rusts them and completely screws them up, so they obviously sat at the bottom of the intercooler and screw into the various cooler plates that hold the rad and the uh, condenser for the air conditioner all together. So cutting a slit in has managed to uh, allow me to get a flat blade in there and screw these off. And timber. Well, there's some new screws I need to get. What are you? No. Mm -hmm. Close ish. Close. But no. So, it is a little time later, and our ozone machine has finished. You can see through there, it has reached zero. That means it is done, so what I need to do is open up the car, let everything air out, and hopefully that has taken care of the smoke smell. We will see and I'll keep it posted. Hopefully this works. We might need to do it again, depending, but it's been sitting there for a while and doing its thing, so that's it. Well, the car is now airing out. As you can see, windows and doors open. There's obviously a bit of a funny smell, which is from the ozone. Um, wrong angle. So, new radiator. Um, we've got to just... Yeah, just 
clip the binding just to take all those little bits off and then we need to put the correct size plug in and according to this we need the short one for our manual gearbox so that's fantastic I'll grab that pop a little o-ring on it and call it i want to do a little service announcement for everyone so when putting these little plugs in for your radiator um, they only go in really in one direction it's like a half lock so you've got two little like keys almost and they'll slide in and as you can see from here see the little tab over there it will then move fully over and seat once it is locked into position so despite its appearance it is not see the little tabs i'm talking about there it will slide in and then lock into place it is not a screw do not attempt to screw it in it will break it and your radiator will leak ask me how i know because i did that once before one of the old bmws so yay don't don't copy my mistakes well it has been a few hours and i think i've got a fair amount of stuff done so i've gone ahead and given the garage a bit of a clean because I say clean, this is a lot neater than things were, it was chaos. But, as you can see, we have the radiator and condenser in place, all pipes, airbox, etc, plumbing all in place as well. What I did is I went over and cleaned all the hoses off as well, as you can see there. Nice and shiny, well the plastic's shiny and the hoses are nice and clean. Everything snapped in beautifully as it should, so we are good. I only have these two cables here to throw down towards the gearbox and plug into the box when it is on. But other than that, it's time to throw fluids in when I go ahead and buy those. Um, I've got oil in, obviously, so I wasn't going to start the car without that but obviously for 10 seconds plus fun fat coolant. So we're gonna go ahead and get that in and then we can go ahead and run it up to temperature make sure it gets a full run in procedure and the correct bleed through of the fuel system because obviously it still takes a little long to crank to start. So other than that, I've just been setting up the parking sensors and all that. And onto the interior. Well, the ozone has uh, worked its magic and I cannot smell a smoke smell in the car anymore because there's always like this lingering smoke smell in the car. Now it's just like a neutral kind of smell. So what I'm going to do now is obviously just close the car up because right now we don't have the battery connected and ooh, reach over. And we will keep that closed and I will check on it tomorrow because usually the smoke smell would come back within a day um, if I let the car air. So the telltale sign will be tomorrow if there is no smell. So let's lock her up. Ta-da! laid back in and there we go that was a bit dodgy but anyway. right it is about look at that one minute past five and um, I'm gonna call it there because I think in an hour's time, it is South Africa versus Ireland for the Rugby World Cup and it's time to go cheer the home team on and beat the Irish. Apparently they're the team to beat, so we'll see. Well, I'm going to head on over and do that. I will catch you guys later. You guys stay awesome and ciao. Well, it is update time. It's the next day, and technically the smoke smell should be back in the car. Personally, I don't smell it. 
Apparently Catlin said she could smell the smoke smell yesterday, but I don't know, maybe she's got a better sense of smell than I do, but I can't smell it, so ozone machine works.